When you see people building ministry around their families, it's only their cousins, their children. Oh man, you got it wrong. It's a family. It's a family of faith. Abraham never knew us. But his life created a platform for us to step into something that only Jews could access at the beginning. How many people will have chances because of your life? How many people will have opportunities because of your life? Oh, the days of the rat race, those days are over. The priests that have knowledge must rise. Reski for Lomos Copreketelima Ilamomo Sakiletai. He must increase. He must increase his ways. They must increase in me. His body, it must increase in me. My understanding of him must increase in me. I must give way. I must decrease continually, perpetually, so that he can be revealed. His ways, his glory can be made manifest. He must increase in my life. So will I talk of Melanta. Parakose kubela kuzani. Resukela Panamon Sami Bekute Makabo Korotomo in the cross. He must increase in my vessel, in my life. Oh, yes. Roke Bakosi Bene, Rekesco Bakula Mantabo, Rodesi Mama Maya. For Roman Cielo Labro Cosacataya. Oh, you must decrease your reign, your government, your strength must decrease so that God can have a stronger advantage through your vessel. There is a platform that your life is supposed to create so that God can set foot. So that God can have access beyond the river. Labo si comalige in the cross. Death to my wisdom. Death to my ways. Death to my preferences. That your preferences will become my preferences. Your ways will become my ways. Your choices will become my choice. What you choose, I will choose. Your life must be that platform. Seminanto ke bobo labrokos keta masekadianto presi koma halabaparata es komo kobilaito yeka masuri amala ela lamo koseli sabro kote malia kuskeda oh we give you glory in Jesus mighty name Philippians chapter 3 verse 10 Philippians chapter 3 verse 10 that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death four elements here 
in one package. There is a way we need to know him. That will guarantee that we will know the reality of the power that was responsible for raising him from the dead. And once that way, you will fellowship in his sufferings. You will, you will participate in this body of sufferings that accurate service to his will is going to bring. Hallelujah. These sufferings that you'll be subjected to, that you fellowship with, in the journey towards knowing him, it will kill some things that are not of him. It's a killing agent. So if you are running with an ambition, for instance, that is not of him, as you begin to fellowship with his sufferings, that ambition becomes weak and it loses the ability to drive you. So there is a death of every single thing that doesn't derive from him that you experience. So that that which is of him will become your essence. Then you will know the power that raised him from the dead. I went to preach somewhere. I was the second preacher. The first preacher was very powerful. Scattered the whole place. And my friend now told me, Hey, I know you're anointed. When you go there, do more than him. That was what my friend said. But what the Holy Ghost said was, I should not even lay hands at all. The message that he gave me, I should teach it and go back to my seat. Do you realize that when the meeting ended, My teaching, which was for 15 minutes. From the feedback that the person that organized the meeting now brought to me, said, that's your moment. But I, I, my intention was not to outdo the other preacher. My intention was to do what he wants. If you are going to do what he wants, you will die to the suggestions of the flesh. You will die to it. If it's him you want on display, oh my. The narrative of your flesh must be quenched. Your flesh is going to suffer until it loses the authority to wield the stirring of your life. So that's the only way that you can know the power of his resurrection. You know, these days, finally as I close, the average faith preacher will never accept that there is a capsule of suffering for the Christian. That is legitimate Christian experience. If you want to understand the Christian life, let's start with Jesus. He authored it. In fulfilling his, the errand heaven sent him to accomplish, did he suffer? You cannot remove suffering from your own experience. Oh, there are sufferings that you are going to go through in order for you to keep up with the expectation of spiritual exercises. There are sacrifices. There are fastings. There are watchings. Some things that will happen to you because Satan attacked you. Because the Bible says, we wrestle. We wrestle. The word wrestle in that scripture involves you taking a punch sometimes. And all of that, you are in harm's way just because you are his servant. So when you come to the house of God with that mentality that, oh, Jesus paid all the price. Jesus authored it, created the pathway and the example so that you have an idea of how your own experience will look like. Just like God pedestaled Abraham as a pattern. It means that everyone in this auditorium today it's a, it's a manifestation of something that derives from Abraham. Abraham was a pattern man for all, all of them that will believe. Jesus is the author of what you are walking in today. 
and it is by him that you will finish it. Your own experience cannot be. Do you know how many? You don't know. You don't know. When you begin to grow in the Lord and you decide that you will grow beyond the baby food that most ministers give in the name of faith teaching, then you understand that you are going to suffer for this your Lord to do his will. There are inconveniences you will need to accommodate and even love. Do you know, for a very long time, I don't come out of my room in the morning and see the parlor empty. People with problems are already in the parlor before I come. Why? Because this has put something upon me. Your life has changed already just because of that. You need to adjust to accommodate the... <coughs> Hallelujah. You can't sleep because you need to study the Bible. And the best time to study is in the night. Oh. Are you with me? You still need to keep fit so that you will live long. You wake up in the morning. The fact that you are preaching doesn't mean you don't need to exercise. If you need to do every other thing plus the burden of the calling. Walking with him alone is a sacrifice. Oh, how many of you know the Holy Ghost when he comes, what he wants doesn't, is never compatible with the flesh. When you want to rest and say, ah, I just came back, the Holy Ghost will say, and you shall arise now. <laughs> 